Hi everyone, it's Hans here, the founder of Cappuccino, and welcome to this latest episode of Flat Whites and Insights, a podcast created to allow a space for open, honest and vulnerable conversations with real people, all over a beautiful cup of coffee. We're here in my home, so I'll be providing the flat whites, and my guests, they'll be providing the insights. So grab a coffee for yourselves, take a moment, and I hope you enjoy this latest conversation. Thank you, take care, and enjoy. Max, hi there. Hi, how are you doing? You right? Yeah, good, good. Thank you for taking up a Sunday morning That's um, right. to come it's over. It's a nice drive, actually, yeah. through, through the... The countryside, yeah, exactly. Fun. It's not too bad, Oxfordshire. We've got some, some nice bit nice, of the country, yeah. um, but appreciate you coming on. And I've obviously followed your career for a while. Um, I was a Wickham fan growing up, so I remember you breaking through. Um, Hartlepool all away, I think, was the first goal, yeah. Um, Exeter away, yeah. it's another good, good screamer. Um, so remember seeing your career grow, and that was about 10 years ago now. Um, so for me, this is quite a full circle moment, yeah. But, um, so you, those who don't know who you are, um, not all my followers are kind of from the football world, you're right to give a brief introduction. Yeah, of course. So my name is Max Kretschmar. Um, as you said, I came through at Wickham Wanderers in League Two, League One as a scholar. So a scholar is kind of like when you're 16, you leave school and go play full-time football, which was yeah. like my dream. Yeah. Um, everyone asked me, like, did you miss home? Did you have to? I was, like, I was just like, no. I was just like fully in it. Just loved it. So I stayed up in Wickham. Mm. Um, above a pub actually there was eight of us nine of us above a pub so you can imagine how carnage that oh, was really? like, like nine of the academy boys nine boys yeah so two first years so under 17s and then like eight or seven under 18 yeah. so yeah some of the best moments of my life in there but <laughs> it was really not the best pub in the world so we weren't being stupid and drinking and things like that but some are just you know living with eight other lads is just fantastic and then yeah, yeah I got a professional contract two years later mm-hmm um, I got actually a really bad, uh, I broke my leg in my second year scholar uh, okay. on my tibia, so just above my ankle joint. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty tough, but managed to come back from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gary Woodett was the manager. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he gave me my first pro and then, yeah, my first year as a pro, I never played a single game. Mm. I was on the bench twice. I was very, I'm still now, but I was very small, very skinny. Mm. And then obviously Woodett left, Gary Fainsworth come in yeah. for his long stint and, um, yeah, that first year, obviously, I was, I've always prided myself on training well. I was always a good trainer. Mm. And, yeah, um, got another year professional contract. And as I said, look, go away, go in the gym. You've got to get stronger and yeah. things like that. Mm. Did it day one yeah. uh, after the season ended. I was in the gym. And, yeah, and like I said, that season you remember me from was my breakthrough season when I was 19. Yes, 2013-14, wasn't it? God, yeah, that sounds right. I'm, sounds... I'm a stats I'm a stats man, yeah. so I'd, I'd know all the things. But, yeah, 2013 So, yeah, I uh, didn't, start the first, didn't start the first game. Came on for my debut yes. um, at home to Morecambe. Yeah. And then, yeah, those goals against Hartlepool were probably one of my fondest in my career. Yeah. Came on at half-time. We were 1-0 down. No, it was 0-0. Mm. Came on at right mid, scored two goals. Yeah. And, yeah, we won 2-1, and it was just like, like you said, scoring your first two goals, winning yeah. the game as well. Mm. Yeah, amazing. Um, and I've still got that shirt um, at home. Or yeah. my dad's got it, my mum's got it. Was it was the framed. Tequila Sunrays one, wasn't it? It the, is, The yeah. yellow and orange. It's, yeah. yeah, it was a nice kit. FIFA <laughs> on the back, Samsung. It was, oh, it was, yeah, it was the year we had the, yeah, it was good, so. the good sponsors there as well. Yeah. So. Um, and then, obviously, my career developed mm-hmm. at Wickham. We lost at Wembley in the playoff final to yeah. Southend. And that's the shirt you've got there. Yes. And yeah, yeah. And then I've just kind of fallen down the leagues, but been in the National League most of my career mm-hmm. with Woking and now Wildstone. Yeah, amazing. No, it's awesome hearing you kind of recount that. And I'm sure we can dive into a little bit of the experience of being around the kind of seven, eight other lads and, uh, yeah. and growing up. I mean, even just then, before we hit record, I was talking about, so Darius Charles and Oryx, Wickham player, um, he's now at Man City. It's kind of like a house parent. So obviously, probably worlds apart like the Man City to Wickham Wanderers, but the the amount even now it's interesting to think of clubs and what goes into the academy and, and but, the aftercare yeah. it's a really big role of course because I know obviously obviously Jordan and I have used to play at Wickham he moved to Liverpool and they moved all his family up there so mm. obviously sometimes that's not um, feasible so yeah. the role of I call him a digs lady or a digs person yeah, yeah, um, yeah. is really big obviously the food's got to be 
reasonable because yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're athletes now. But obviously the emotional and psychological side, like mm. they're kind of a surrogate parent maybe for yeah. a year or two. So you should probably spend more time with, with them than, than your actual family. And I think I'd spotted on your, your bio, you've got UA for B yeah. as well. So you've done some kind of coaching. Coaching, and, yeah. And with my role in Barks and Bucks, such a big part of, we'd say like the, the safeguarding element, like being a coach, whether it's grassroots level to, yeah. to the pro game. Um, yeah, it's such a big part. You play in the development, and, and there's probably throughout your career, um, you mentioned some names, Gary what are, Gareth yeah. Ainsworth, um, Dobbo as well would have been there. Yeah, well, yeah. Dobbo is the my time. biggest influence in my career, probably. Yes. Well, yes, yeah. yeah, certainly. Um, Richard Dobson, obviously, he was a coach at mm. Wickham. He was yeah. head of youth. So when he signed me as a 15, 16 year old, I'd left Southampton. I was at Southampton from 10 yeah. to 15, left there, uh, got, got released, and then went on trial at Brentford and Wickham. Mm. And uh, Dobbo obviously knew I was small. Uh, yeah. He was a small player himself. So he was like, yeah, we'll wait for you. We'll wait for your growth. Mm. And he kept his promise and, we, and I did. And he then became assistant manager at Wickham. Yeah. So I was going, oh, crap. Like, is he gone now? Have I lost his coaching because yes. now he's gone to the first team? Yeah. It's completely opposite. He was now in a better position to like, Bring all of us through, like feed it through. I remember the names. I mean, sorry, well, you're about to yeah. Go, I mean, like off from that normally year. you're told maybe you get one a year. Mm. Age group of like eighteen of you, okay. maybe you get yeah. one or two that come through. I mean, at Wickham we had Charles Dunn, Anthony yeah. Stewart, Kadeem Harris, myself, Josh Scohan, who's yeah. still there, um, Jordan Ibe, obviously much later, mm. um, loads, and they've actually gone and had like varying yeah. careers, but made you know money and a living and. Yeah. had the best job in the All world for like 10 or 15 yeah. years so yeah I'm sure I've left some out as well but it was a, a lot of players come yeah. through in a short space of time no it was amazing and that was kind of the time that I so yeah 10 years ago I was just kind of getting really into to Wickham um, being you know old enough to go go down and watch watch the games yourself rather than and, yeah. and since then I've really been much more into I love getting to a live football game more than watching it on the telly obviously yeah. catch match of the day and things but of course, yeah. it's and now I'm involved heavily at Didcot Town local team so I started out as a sponsor but like with all these things volunteers at your clubs I'm sure you've got them at Worldstone yeah. as well like so people many. who do so many jobs around their place and now I do like the stats hence I was able to <laughs> I can tell you 85 games 9 goals for Wickham I can yeah, tell you that I'm sure you do. yeah. <laughs> you're on that but um, it's a decent ratio as well I've always had a midfielder. good ratio just yeah. injuries have helped me back a little bit but I've always had a ratio of starting games 1 in 3 Nice. So I look yeah, at like yeah. my hero, like Frank Lampard, like ridiculous, yeah. like one and two and a half, something like that. But <laughs> yeah. games I start mm. to like play, I always base myself on goals and assists. So mm. I've always had quite a good like record. It's just being able to play for 50, 60 games a season, I found tough. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like I said, throughout my whole career, even at Woking, I was scoring 15, 16 a season. Yeah. I always wanted to get double figures every year. So nice. kind of um, playing that attacking role, attacking yeah, midfield. Yeah. Um, you kind of have to get goals and assists. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, Worldstone, so that's the current club. Yeah. Um, been a bit of change at the club recently, obviously, yeah. um, with the manager manager moving on. Um, but I think I think you recently put out a video because you also do your YouTube and you kind of got your podcast. Yeah. So it's Max Talks Football, isn't it? That's um, it. I'll let you talk about it, it rather than myself. Yeah, no, I'll let you plug it. <laughs> no, well. so it was kind of I did a degree. So alongside football, mm. obviously, footballers have a lot of time. Yes. So. Yeah. It's quite, we obviously know there's a lot of like, well, there used to be a drinking culture in football. Yeah. Gambling obviously is yeah, rife yeah. now. There's so many adverts on the TV. But a normal day, it sounds crazy because they get paid millions, but not further down the leagues. Yeah, Everyone yeah. thinks you get paid thousands down the leagues, but you don't. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no. um, normal day, maybe get in at nine, start training at 10, maybe 11. And then sometimes, especially on a Friday before a game, yeah. set pieces, easy session, don't want to be too heavy, so nice and light. You're done by like one. You have lunch, done by one, two o'clock. So mm. all of a sudden you have this two till obviously the evening. Yeah, yeah. Um, sitting around, maybe your wife or your other half is working. Or, yeah. So you've got a lot of time to yourself. So it is, I, my mum was always on top of me, like studying yeah. alongside football. Yeah. I was quite good at school, lazy, but smart. Yeah. yeah so yeah. she was constantly on me. So that's why I've done the B license. Nice. Did a degree in professional sports journalism and broadcasting. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Um, I, th I went into the course thinking I'd want to be like a journalism. I like, I've always written for Wiccan program. I do yeah. write a column for the Willstone program. Nice. Yeah. Um, but I went in and I really enjoyed the radio stuff mm. and the TV stuff is tough. I mean, we all have a go at the P 
people on the TV, it's quite common in Twitter yes, news yeah, at the minute course, for like females and males, but yeah. punditry full stop. Mm. It is actually tough. We've done a little, um, on, on my course, we had like a, it was a two year accelerated course, so yeah, three years yeah. to two years. Um, but there was obviously, we've done the typical soccer Saturday, so we watched Arsenal, Chelsea, when Chelsea beat them 4-1 in the Europa League. Yeah. Right, and we'd watch the game. Right, there's been a goal, Max. Go stand in front of that camera and you've got to tell us about the yeah. goal. And I was like, yeah, it's a piece of piss. Like, we've been doing yeah, it exactly. our whole lives. Oh, we've been watching it. And, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, stop again. Start again, <laughs> start again. It was actually really hard. Yeah. Lights all on you, things like that. It was quite intimidating. Yeah. But eventually you got better at it. But yeah, I really enjoyed the radio and TV side of it. So Max Talks Football was my little YouTube channel at the minute. Very nice. in its infancy. Been doing it over the like five, six months. Yeah. Um, you know, not got a lot of subscribers, but it's kind of like it was maybe if I after football go media or coaching, I'm not sure which way I go. I really like the coaching. Yeah, I am good yeah. at it. High, high, high stressful job, low pay mate when you start. So oh, yeah. it's about I wanted to have something else. So it's kind of one, I really enjoy it. Like you said, bringing the fans closer to yes. players yeah, and you get that a lot in non-league as well. Mm. So I do match day vlogs on that. Yeah kind of had a lot of feedback about when I talk over the highlights and mm. things, they really enjoy it because they yeah. see it from a player's it's a footballer's point of view. perspective, isn't it? So like, I think I saw you recently did like a shorts video, a short video about analysing your own yeah. game and watching video back. And, and I think that's really interesting to, to yeah, as you say, to, from, to actually see it through the mind of a player yeah. or even like where you've got your coaching badges. And, and I see yourself and it, I almost wasn't surprised there when you say you've got your like coaching badges up cause, and through the media, you feel like you really do analyse your game and yeah. you're, like some people maybe don't love football so much, they'll play it. it but it's, I think it's it's higher, but you feel like, or maybe that's the way the game. I think it goes for life in general. Be. Whatever business, or whatever yeah. thing you're doing, like you kind of need to self-analyze, yeah. correct if you need to, learn mm. from your mistakes, and then grow and become better at what you do. But mm. definitely, only on my career again, um, I had a lot of anxiety before games. I'd like mm. throw up in the toilet like yeah. before a game, and I'd eat breakfast and go right. Well, it's not sound graphic, but like I put all that nutrients in my body and now I can just and so I go out and like feel really leggy and things mm. like that then on top of that go away after the game and over analyse and like why did I miss that chance da, 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 da. Um, mm. so I saw a sport I mean, there's almost a there's a there's a risk of getting into it too much really. yeah Cause and like self-defeating yourself yeah, and things yeah. like that so you, I do sometimes now if we get beat 4-0 mm. I don't I, like I will look at it a little bit but I'm not going to hang on to it too much no. and I used to go back on a Saturday. It used to affect, obviously, my relationship with my other half. And yeah, like yeah. now, I don't know if it's age or whatever. Like football is the main thing in my life, but I can go home and yeah. forget about it and write it off. Maybe yeah. have a beer or have a, like a cup of tea or whatever, and just go like yeah, it's done. Mean, like, and have a nice chat with my my fiance. So it's it's better it's better now. Um, mm. But there obviously is a balance of like, okay, where did I go wrong? Okay, yeah. cool. And also like just binning off a terrible performance or something yeah, like that. Yeah, of course. Every now and again, there's a yeah. there's something that you just kind of got to write off. Um, so you mentioned there about feeling a bit anxious before games. Um, I'm sure it's, it's a very common amount among like, especially young players coming through because um, I guess for yourself, from your perspective, having maybe that injury when you were younger, yeah. having that year where you're on a contract but you're not playing, yeah. That first start or that first time when you come off the bench, there's excitement. But or what was that like for yourself, if you can recall, well, like kind of the back to the injury. We played Luton away, and the ball went over to their striker. He's I'm playing centre midfield. He's had a bad touch back into midfield, and he's just come over straight over yeah, my leg. Yeah, yeah. I tried to play on, um, couldn't. Um, you know, the, obviously the bionic boots you kind of get, which yeah. don't you know, like the boots when you get an ankle injury or something like that. Yeah. Put that on, and I, I, I hate those boots because it. I'm injured. It basically clarifies. Uh, it's like a badge injured. of a yeah. label on you, injured so in, player. Yeah. On the way home, I took it off. I was obviously not happy. Dad was driving, and my ankle just blew up. And I mean, like something I've never seen before. Mm. So I, I just burst into tears in the car. Um, Dad rings the physio, Murray Moore. Um, he's like, "Get that boot on." Blah blah blah. Anyway, had to have an operation, yeah. and I'm saying like, in this was October time, so mm. I come back in February. And, and this how, is how old were you at the time? Eight, you know, eighteen. So, so yeah, so like, so just, just turned eighteen. Yeah, like emotions all over the place. But this is the year, like, I have to prove to Gary Woodock that, like, yeah, it's it's and it's the biggest year of your life. So I come back in February, and looking back on it now, I could have seen the signs then. I I was doing my rehab with 
every day watching the boys going out training. Like yeah, that's yeah. a lot of players, especially from the outside, especially Twitter, which is obviously a pretty cesspit at times. It's like yeah, yeah. a lot of fans criticise players for being injured and like we don't want to be injured. It's the last thing we want. It's the hardest thing. Yeah. Not playing because of the manager not picking you. Yeah. Okay. Not playing because you're injured. The two worst things, like, it's just, yeah, it's horrible. So you watch the boys go out. Injured players have to be in earlier than the players and they leave later than the players playing. Yeah. So again, come back. But I was doing my rehab with the first team physio as well. Nice. So looking back on it, they had a plan for me. I think they trusted that I was yeah. good enough. Yeah. To go, and then, I think that's something, as a Wickham fan, I've noticed over the years, they potentially have a players in. They seem like a club that really look after their players. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's people who like probably have stories about that with every club. I just yeah. am exposed to the Wickham ones because I'm a fan. But I think, so Nick Freeman, who was at the club yeah, yeah. and came through, I think he had quite a bad injury, ACL. Mm-hmm. But the club gave him that contract, extended it, so he didn't have to worry about yeah. rushing, getting fit. to give it Like Darius, yeah. we spoke about um, earlier, but where he was told it after time and Ainsworth was just said like you're a big part of the group um, yeah. and there's mortgages to pay there's bills there's things like that yeah, like, people don't again like you said people yeah. see footballers as you know you got it made but there's a big difference between being a Premier League player with all the sponsorships and all the all the things that come around it to... I, know, I know there is like a, a certain point where yeah my, pu- my, my point's a bit mute but like whether you're on 50 grand a week or 5 grand or 500 quid like mm. obviously it's a bit easier. I know what we're saying. It's a bit easier with fifty grand, but like sometimes it's irrelevant because you're still not being able to do what you love. Yeah. Which is why it's, it shows that high-profile players do have tough mm. time, really tough times. We well. see a lot of people when they, once they've retired in sports, don't they? People like yeah. especially in like rugby or or football or any team sports or cricket. I know cricket. Um, I follow cricket. I'm quite big into that I as well. Cricket and um, there's, there was been issues with mental health, and you can see if you're on a big tour. Let's say you're an opening batsman, you get a duck. And then you're literally sat One there and a half for days. two and a half days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, the less we say about the cricket this morning, the oh better. I don't God. know if you've been I'm, following. So it. <laughs> I get up at four a.m. I put it on the radio and yeah. then half asleep, half like yeah. It was like two hundred for two the other day. I was like, oh, we're flying. Go, okay, yeah. Root, whatever does what he does, got out. <laughs> and then it's just I went back to sleep. Woke up, we're eight down. I was like, oh, it's what? just yeah, I know. Or even this morning, I think by the time we're four down, I didn't see it beyond that. It, it's seven by the oh time you arrived. And, I mean, by the time yeah. as we're speaking, it's probably <laughs> probably over. But um, but I, that's that sounds very negative. But the way like the team have been and like the Ashes recently was, it was incredible. But going back to that kind of the mindset thing and the the, the pressure on a, an athlete at the well, it's level. even tougher in cricket because like you said it's an individual team sport like yes. I'm bowling to you and you're batting yeah. and if you do get out you have two and a half days and unless you carry a bat your last delivery you face is always a wicket thinking, I remember talking thinking, to a mate who was, at, it, watching it who was at uni with me um, and he said that that's why he finds cricket difficult who's a batsman he was like no matter how many runs you score unless you're not out you end on a, on yeah, a negative on a bad, you, you yeah, end yeah. on a bad which is a really interesting yeah. way of putting it because that's maybe not the case. Say with football, you miss a chance, or you get booked. Like you can maybe make up for it. And you have got ten other people who can maybe get you out of jail as well. But when you're a batsman, there it's a very lonely place. I can imagine. It um, is, and like you said, when you're touring India or even Australia in the past years, like yeah, we're not. Could, well, we've seen obviously the mental health, obviously with Jonathan Trott. Yeah. That tour that yeah, took a toll yeah, yeah. on everyone. It looked like, um, mm. but that ability again, like I don't know what I was saying, go home pop over a beer or whatever, whatever yeah. it is, and just like forget about it. Being able some, to try and, and switch off, yeah. I found that actually playing with some players, especially like kids like from London, mm. who've had that like tough backgrounds yeah, or like they've yeah. got, obviously I'm, I'm not um, a huge religious, well, I'm not a religious person at all, but like, especially like maybe people from tougher backgrounds who yeah, like yeah. have a strong religion, they kind of can separate and just go, well, it's in his hands, God's mm. hands. So like, that can act as really positive, like a really, yeah. because well, if it doesn't go wrong, then yeah. that's kind of what was meant to happen. Like, And I'm like, I'm really jealous of that sometimes because I like, well, no, like it happened because I wasn't good enough or this or that so happened. You mean, so you always trying to find a logic to it. Yeah. Trying to find so sometimes just like yeah. putting it down to a separate entity or something can but be really beneficial. Difficult. I mean, yeah. I'm a massive overthinker yeah. I've, with everything. Like even, I mean, Obviously, it's a bit different in an office job, but even still, like if a day goes badly, or I'm like, oh, I didn't quite get the project through as I liked, or yeah. someone was a bit, someone from a football club was a bit annoyed at me, which happens, you know, yeah, football's an emotional sport, even from the administrative side. Mm. And being part of like the county FA, there are bits where sometimes, you know, 
they feel we only contact them when they're getting a suspension or a fine or, a fine, yeah. or like you know they see us maybe as that dfa which is and people are like they're not doing enough for grassroots football there's sometimes it there's that image we're kind of the bad guys sometimes so how do you go home and like so for me i would try not to overanalyze it for me um a big one is is like reading now. Like I used to, I never used to read when I was growing up. I can't, I only read on holiday. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've had a lot of people say that because it's almost when you're on holiday, you there's nothing else you should be doing. Yeah. But, get, um, yeah. but I'm not great at reading fiction. I like autobiographies. Same, I like same. I like books about, you know, like, like Stephen Bartlett's book I've read leadership or self-help books, like leadership. Yeah, yeah. But again, that's it's me switching off, but my brain still has to be active. I can't be just sat there doing yeah. nothing. I'm not mm. I'm really bad at that, but if I can put my energy into something that's not work, hence, I mean, setting up this platform yeah. with like Cappuccino and got my coffee with Joker Coffee Traders there and doing this podcast. It's things that that's, yeah. are, are busy, but it's not my job. So I feel like I can switch off. From that's that. why it's um, difficult. I've so obviously in football, you have a range of 30 year olds to 18 year olds. So mm. I have, I have a few really good friends who are like 21, 22, even Charlie Barker at uh, Wilson a minute. He's got yeah. a really good career ahead of himself. Mm. Kyron Lofthouse, who was at Woking, he's at MK Dons now, mm. on loan from Barnsley. So you can kind of, I'm 30 now. Yeah. So like, I want them to try and get on the property ladder because it's so hard. And I like, I think, I know it sounds a bit silly, but like, try and prepare for mm. the future, which is difficult to explain because like, to a 21 year old, yeah. because they're going out, whatever, things like that. It's so true though, particularly as in, in the, the field, you're, in the industry you're in. You could get a career in the injury like that. Done. So that's where I've... I like, guess that's where you said your mum was My mum was a so, huge yeah. role because even... So I came from a good school, Hampton, and then mm-hmm. went into um, this BTEC. Obviously, you do the BTEC alongside your football. Yeah, yeah. She put me straight into the diploma one, like the hardest one. She's yeah. like, you're doing that one. Did it with Matty Ingram. Um, okay. Nice. Matt Ingram, the goalkeeper at Wickham. And then, like I said, I had a period still full-time and as soon as I went part-time with Woking mm. it was like wow what am I going to do with like because we trained Tuesday Thursday mornings yeah what am I going to do the rest of my week so I went straight into coaching Love coach that. for a company yeah. in schools and things like that so a lot learned a lot about communication mm. how do you communicate to an eight-year-old to an 18-year-old an eight-year-old yeah. who doesn't want to be there or an eight-year-old kid who wants to be there maybe his mum and dad at school work late so he's just there just to make up the numbers yeah exactly yeah. maybe he actually wants to be a footballer and like he's so it's, it taught me a lot yeah. so from age of 24 up until now really well not up until lockdown mm. uh, i was working for a company and again taught me a lot looking back yeah. on it and then now I just do my own one-to-one coaching and things nice. like that. Um, yeah. So I really enjoy that. Um, mm. uh, but like I said, I learned a lot about communicating to different people because if yeah. you communicate the same way to everyone, yeah. just, well, more than half are probably just going to switch exactly, off. Yeah. So it's a big thing we, be... we have about in coaching as well, particularly at the moment with like, there's a much more of a bigger eye on kind of neurodiversity. So kids with like maybe ADHD, autism, or the way, just understanding that people don't all take it, process yeah. information in the same way and about historically probably if a kid was not making eye contact or maybe being a bit fidgety mm. um you might the coach might just be like oh they're just being disruptive they don't yeah. want to be here they're a troublemaker like, yeah, yeah. and they'll maybe get punished for that when it's just kind of understanding a way to to get through them and it probably helps you on the pitch as well um, yeah, in okay. terms of seeing the game or, or having that from a perspective of understanding what your coaches are trying to how they're feeling or yeah. the, the frustrations but, they might feel but with players to players as well like, i'm very vocal on the pitch so like mm. um which kind of leads into why hopefully I'll be a good coach after. But like, yeah, I I think a coach can give you all the plans mm. you want, but when you go on, you have to manage it yourself. So mm. a lot of stuff, obviously the manager, Stuart Maynard, has just gone to Notts County. Yeah. One of the best preparers for a game. Like, mm. I've, obviously the story around Wilson in the last four years is that like tiny budget, but like, like we play soccer, like we get the ball on the floor. Yeah. Our possession stats are very high. Yeah, we just have good footballing. Good footballing. Very, yeah. really, the best I've ever played in. Like mm. since I was at sixteen at Wickham with Dobbo, but like, um, it's about trying to. Right, I know, especially with Josh Casey, one of my best friends at Woking. Yeah. I know I can shout at him, and it will be done like yeah, a yeah. second later. Yeah, or maybe. I didn't even shout at Josh because we both had high stands. I'd literally look at him, and go, "Come on, mate, that's your man." Or like, "Come on, like." And it was literally just, a look. Just that, yeah. And that was it. And he'd do the same. I'd yeah. go, yeah, that's on me, sorry. But then other players, 
they might need a bit of a rollicking or like, hey, come on, you're better than that. Da, yeah, da, da. Yeah. And then especially, I find it with wingers, like your tricky best players, <laughs> yeah. just tell them they're great. Just yeah, tell yeah, them they're yeah. great all the time. <laughs> I was going to say, like yeah. dribbles ball, loses it. Go, go lose it again. Like go, go try again. Yeah, so, yeah. um, Understanding your players, like some people have proper arm around the shoulder. Yeah, like, exactly. It, it's, you get it in every every That's what walk I'm of life. I mean, yeah. I just think management is such a skill, mm -hmm. and it's not something that you can just like. You can be good at your job, but it doesn't necessarily make you a good manager. Yeah. Not in all walks of life. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, certainly because I think I'm a quite, I'm a bit of a you know I'd be like a winger. I think <laughs> need to be told <laughs> need to be told I'm great. Shot. Just go just go for it because I think I struggled where I said I was an overthinker and like a real big thing I struggle with is like fear of failure. Mm, same certainly did growing up yeah. um that comes from kind of my childhood uh, not going to my parents split when i was like 10 didn't have like the you know the warm family environment that other yeah. people might have like, it, was, it wasn't a difficult childhood i'm not trying to like saying that but in terms of i didn't always i necessarily felt like i'd have to always be like showing my worth or like oh look tell me so I, that validation yeah. i never felt that i do now and it's, it's amazing now to have come to that point where yeah. i'm like confidence in my own like I know that my voice matters I'm valued and all that without getting too too deep into it but yeah always struggled with that fear of failure or needing to be told that I'm great so my manager sometimes would I think if I don't hear anything my mind will automatically think oh I haven't done anything great yeah. whereas actually for some people they, they would love a manager to just never yeah, speak yeah, to them yeah. and just be like well if I hear no news is good news to, to a lot of people um so yeah but we've obviously got a good relationship a very good relationship um and just I'm at the point now I'm more confident to have those difficult conversations and yeah. be like, look, if you don't talk to me for a week, you might think that's you trusting me and letting me off. But to me, I'm like, yeah. oh, I've pissed her off. What have I done? Yeah. <laughs> Why doesn't she want to talk to me? So, I, yeah. Well, I'd liken you to a winger or a striker then. Like I, uh, a striker never means to miss. Like He's trying to score. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see, and it's different, different people in that. I see a striker miss, manager throws his hat on the floor, goes mad, or players go, defenders, because the mm. defenders are, Attackers often clash in their dressing room because, hey, we're doing our job and you're missing your chance, or vice versa. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, um, anytime someone tries something or has a shot and they mm. miss, I'm like, good, do it again. I see Klopp do it a lot. Like, they have a great move. Mm. Someone misses a sitter and he's there clapping above it. Like, brilliant, yeah. do it again. So, yeah, I've never, I say to people, like, I've never met a person who doesn't like they've done their job well or been told this. Exactly. Job. So, yeah. just do it. Just tell people yeah. like, when they've done it. Obviously, when they haven't done it, you've got to let them know as well. But of course, yeah. I don't know anyone who doesn't appreciate being told they've done exactly. well. Exactly, and I think that's the thing. It's that otherwise, a bit like I was saying about the way that some people see the county FA is we're only in contact with them if they've done something wrong or we're charging mm -hmm. them. And, and that's what we're trying to change as a perception yeah. of like, we want to be out there. Because like, at the end of the day, we're there to support people's journey and increase participation in football and make them enjoy it and, and hopefully develop them through it. Um, because you, even you said about like the coaching, like there's skills from that that would translate into any workplace. Like yeah. Communication. Like you said, it's management, not really coach, it's management. It's isn't management, it? isn't it? Yeah, just in, in a football environment. Um, but no, so something I wanted to ask you about as well. So doing the, the media stuff. Um, growing up, was that something you'd always kind of like, uh, say like watching football? Like, has has yeah. football always been just a part of your life? It seems like for the coaching, yeah. the media, like... It is, and that is going to be a problem further down the line because when I have to retire, that'll mm. be one of the hardest transitions hardest, yeah. to do. And it's probably could be happening as we speak. But um, to go back to your question, I I would, yeah, I've just, I, yeah, I wanted to be a footballer my whole life, but like, like I said, I went to a good school. Yeah. I was very good at like, well, I was good. I was a lazy student, but I was very good yeah. whenever I had to. I could turn it on when you needed to. Yeah, that's yeah. it, that's <laughs> it. Um, Effective, efficient. Yeah. I loved, I'd play FIFA, I'd commentate on the games with our mates, I'd, mm. I'd watch games, I'd, my dad used to be, and my mum and dad, I'd go, like, Henri needs to do this, or someone's got to play this, and then the commentator would say it, I'm telling uh, you like 10 seconds later, yeah. and my I've, dad I've would had, look at me. I've had that before growing up, because I used to like commentate, and I used to say it to my family, yeah, similar, Yeah. and I for like the game. So and my dad yeah. would be like, my, well, especially my mum, she was mm. like, you need to do this for a living or something. Like, you need to... Almost like you're... Like, you're being wasted as a footballer. I'm like, oh, cheers. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so, like I said, got an eye for it. Mm. I really... So, I did, um, with the radio stuff for my degree, mm. when, whenever I was injured at Woking, I was co-commentator for BBC Surrey. Nice. So, I'd go yeah. to the game, watch the game, 
And first couple, obviously, I had Mark Francis, who I think he works for, he does horse racing now, he's got his own thing, but like, he was really good with me. So yeah. I found it really hard at the beginning. So obviously holding the mic and like, it actually sounds stupid, but like how you just have to stop talking. So you'd be like, oh, so goal's gone in. Then I kind of go, yeah, great play by the winger. He cut it back and it was a great finish. So yeah. And I'd be like, I'd say that little, though, yeah. so yeah, I'm kind of done talking now. I wouldn't think it's very so, different to a conversation. Yeah. So yeah. Mark was like, just stop talking. So like you say your thing, stop talking. Sometimes there'd be a three, four second pause, but that's mm. natural on commentary. Yeah, because so like, you don't want them to be always talking because no, sometimes no, no. You, yeah. you fill in the game. Yeah. So on radio, you do need to speak more. Uh, f- uh, TV commentators mm. can get away with less, yeah. more stats based, like you said, or like you can just, because the viewer can see it. With radio, there's mo- much yeah. more description and things like that. So a couple of times I celebrated a working goal, pulled the microphone out. So that was a disaster. <laughs> so like, not the microphone, like the whole... I see what you mean, the whole setup. <laughs> oh God. So they were offline for like a minute, done that twice. Yeah. So I had to try and um, hold my motions together. But like I said, that one, and it was, what does the listener want to hear? So I was like, okay, I'm a player. Mm. So sometimes at half time, I'd go into the change room and come back up, mm. not tell them the whole team talk, yeah, obviously, yeah. but like the viewers going, wow, like we've got an inside knowledge to the dressing room. What I think that's it. People want that inside. And what can you bring that? another commentator couldn't so then tactical stuff as well i'm watching the game yeah yeah so a lot of the time especially with coaching as well you'd be like right get touch tight or um got to make an angle here and the Mm. kids look at me like and i'd be like you assume that they know what you're talking about so it's about kind of okay so they might not know that woke in a play in a three at the back today why would they be doing that and then you kind of get into that and then i had a lot of good feedback about wow like you're kind of educating the listener Mm. as well so I'd come into the commentary and be like, right, give them tactical stuff and yeah. maybe give them little nuggets from the dressing room. And then those two things... Yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's what you can and, yeah. So, yeah. No, I love it. And it's, it is difficult though. You say, like, I've tried a bit even doing it on pre-recorded highlights. Yeah. So for Digcar, I don't tend to do it anymore, but there was a stage where I was, you know, but commentating as if it was live. That's hard. That, that is hard. Because you're not in the moment course, and you're yeah. trying to make it sound. And actually part of me was thinking maybe it would be better to just do it in the past, like like it's already happened, yeah. um, but I think it and actually like I mean no disrespect to Digcart, I don't think there's gonna be that many people watching it who don't know yeah, the score. Because if you're not, really into Digcart, yeah, if you're really into a club that size, you're either there or you're gonna probably be keeping up on the score. But even watching it back, it's nice to it, it feels like it's live. That was, but it, is, it was difficult because the emotion maybe yeah. to because you've got 89 minutes of yeah maybe nothing or ooh <laughs> and ah and then finally when it does happen like yeah yeah so it's just for yeah. highlights. But um but no it was it was it was good and actually I had um someone on my podcast this same series so Chloe but she does a lot for you know the bunch of amateurs yeah, yeah. so she's part of like the recording crew for I that it, yeah. so that new series it's like Rains Park Vale yeah doing. I watched the first because it's yeah. Conor Gallagher's brother who's yeah. the manager um, and yourself being a Chelsea fan so I used uh, to coach I still coach in Bookham and he used to be on the pitch before me so okay. they got a lot of brothers Jake I played against he played for Aldershot yeah like run 13k a game <laughs> smash you like yeah, yeah. he was a really good pro um, so yeah there's a few brothers now and obviously I'm a Chelsea fan so yeah. big fan of Connor so Connor um, yeah seeing, seeing what he's doing but um, but yeah so and, and she's doing sports journalism I think at, at Solent at the moment so Southampton yeah. way uh, to head, head of media at Eastley um, so. but again another YouTube channel taking you behind the mm, scenes it's almost not so much the action it's the bits outside of that and I've noticed a lot of football clubs like they do inside match day I think even like Wickham were doing it yeah. and, and even like the photog- videographer at Didcot sometimes he'll just put them highlights but what people like is the kind of the atmospheric stuff yeah. and you kind of get a sense for the day which is awesome but yeah. um, but no um, appreciate it mate That's um, right. in terms of uh, can I talk about so you said about like the anxiety and stuff before the games um, or something just with the nature of my, my yeah. podcast my own mental health experience yeah. and stuff um, at Wellstone at the moment or just in general in football, is there like a psychologist or something? Because I know I don't know at what point in the game, and I guess for people listening, yeah. at what point is it? It's a good question. It, I'd, I'd have to ask. We don't have one. No, we had no, one at yeah. Wickham. Misha, who I think is still there at Wickham. Mm. Um, it's definitely something like you said. We said before we started recording. It's becoming more popular to study. Um, yeah, and I think it's, or even I guess it doesn't have to be a, a qualified sports psychologist. But the conversation and that the hair dry trip, like the old fashioned management yeah. style. I don't think with some of the younger players, definitely now, it would go down well if someone coming in just... In that. And 
Young people, yeah. I co- coach a lot of young people, they don't respond to that now. Mm. They don't respond to it. They're um, more like your strikers and wingers. They're, they're a bit softer. Like we have to Game's gone soft. <laughs> but no, in terms of... People have changed because... People have changed, yeah. That's the... um, you know, words like woke or blah, blah, or like, not soft, but I'm trying to, I can't think of a word I'm trying to think of, but like... I'd say people, there's a lot more of an emotion, like understanding and yeah. like the, I guess the mental side, like mental health as much as physical health is... Yeah. is much more understood prevalent than, yeah yeah and um and so that's something that coaches and, and players have to kind have of to, have to take into account um, but um yeah so before games very anxious i'd, I'd yeah. struggle to eat and eating now by the time i got to like 27 26 mm. i've got a love like a great routine i'm used yeah, to now yeah. so we all know like sometimes I'd have like a bit bowl of porridge and I'd score a hat trick. I'd be like, right, porridge every day. And <laughs> it, people are superstitious as well, aren't they? In the, in 100%. And sometimes things work mm. when sustainably they won't work for that in the future. So maybe you just had like a little, tiny little cereal bar before a game. Yeah. And then like, I know Josh Gowen doesn't eat hardly anything and he oh, really? runs and smashes people. He, he, He's the best he, player yeah. every week. That was many years ago. I don't know what he does now, but it's different for different people. So it's about kind of finding that yeah. element. But for me, preparing really well mm. from a Monday to a Friday, but then a Friday night to a Saturday morning to a three o'clock kickoff yeah. gives me a lot of confidence. Mm. So I've realised, like, right, three and a half hours before kickoff, yeah. 11.30, I'm having my pasta. So I have to have pasta for breakfast, so it's a bit weird. Yeah. But um, for an away trip in a hotel, I get up whenever I get up. I might go down for a coffee in the morning. Yeah. Have a little walk, make sure I'm drinking lots of water. But I'll always eat like from eleven fifteen to eleven thirty. That just works for me. Yeah, and it's that. Um, I guess as well, you said that there's a lot of uncontrollables, but you you know you can control that yeah. routine. And if you've done that, yeah, it maybe helps with we said about let's say the result doesn't go well, or you don't have your best performance. As long as you know you've done your preparation, yeah, yeah. you can kind of yeah, can be like okay, it happens. And it's important because like like I said, when you've got a longer body of work or results yeah, that have yeah. worked, you, it, you know it works. But when you're younger, I was definitely flitting from one thing to another. Like, I guess you're trying to work it out or trying to find yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I wish I'd worked out earlier because I probably may, may have played better at Wickham, even though I played pretty well. But like, mm. yeah, that just comes with experience and time in the game. When I left Wickham and played at Woking, didn't have a great season. My first season there, got released from Woking. Yeah. I had a, a separated my AC joint. Mm. I had a medial knee. I'd, I'd done my knee and then come back the first game back, I'd done my shoulder. So I was just like, God. Saw a psychologist then. Yeah. And we're talking about overanalyzing earlier. Like, yeah, yeah. So if I have a chance in the 90th minute and I miss it, mm. I go home, I think about it, I run it through my mind 10, 15, 20, 50 yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. And she said to me that, um, just in her back garden, it was a private, uh, yeah, yeah. my mum and dad found and went and saw her in, near where I lived. Yeah, yeah. And she said, every time you replay it in your mind, like you're missing that chance again. So the mm. effect of you missing that chance is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. So like she taught me how, okay, what would you do next time? Rather than think about the chance again you missed, yeah. would you gone with your inside the foot? Was the cross good enough? Like what, Like think about what you do next time to yeah. score. Mm. And that kind of helped me as well. Like yeah. um, rather than like, okay, I did that wrong. Okay, what, what will you do next time? What will you change? Yeah. So. Love that. Um, that helped me a lot um, and now yeah I do I feel my body getting anxious before a game I don't mm. feel the sickness I used to have or yeah. like mentally like feel oh god I'm going to play terrible today. Yeah. I used to play games at Wicked like I just want it to be over like mm. the fine I'd be walking onto the pitch and like, oh, I can't wait for this to finish yeah. not in a bad way because I want to win and lose or not lose but like fear of failure it was more yeah. the fear of failure was outweighing it was almost, it was I'm going to have a really good game today oh there's 10 minutes left don't make a mistake. That's 10 minutes to not make a mistake. Or to not. Exactly how I was thinking. Yeah, so, which, is, which I guess though, as a young player coming through... Um, but sometimes it's the other way. Your breakthrough season as well, Wickham obviously... I, I mean, Ainsworth did an incredible job um, getting Wickham to where he did, but the season that you broke through, was that the season with Torquay away that it finished? Yeah. So there were going to be moments like pressure and yeah. d- don't want to be... I can imagine if you're a young player and you're the person who get sent off on that final day of the season and then Wickham get relegated to the conference. Like, yeah. I, mean, I, say, the I remember the week before we lost to Bristol. That was the big one. I Bristol Rovers. Bristol Rovers. They Sorry. all came on the pitch, didn't they? And, then... yeah. and I, I had a... F- I think we played Northampton, Bristol Rovers, mm. Torquay, all around us. Yeah. Northampton, last minute, I had a free kick. Goalie tipped onto the bar. We scored the rebound and it was offside. 
Yeah. Then we lost to Bristol Rovers. I was poor that game. They I scored a free kick. I think I, I remember that because I was at the game and I, I was walking back from that game. I, in my head, I was like, oh, that's probably so. That's probably it. Yeah. So mm. okay. So it's probably it. I, I go back to my house, living at home. I'm like to my dad, like, how do we? Okay, we're three points behind. We've got mm. to play the next week. We're, we're down. Um, what's happening next season? What do I do? Personally, I've had a good season. Where do I go? Yeah, what do I yeah. do? Like. Making no plans, but like thinking, oh my god, what mind like, just firing? Go. Just couldn't, a week yeah. later, we stayed up, yeah, and then we're bloody at Wembley the following season. It's cra- like the turn crazy, yeah. it's mad. So, it's really important never to get too high, too low. If it will manage to say it all the time, but mm. it, it is, is, as you say, it's so tricky because you don't know how quickly things can turn and turn. Around. Yeah, so it's a great, there's a great quote I come from, from a famous writer. It was like, treat both imposters the same, like. I'm going to actually destroy the quote, yeah, yeah. but treat impost- both imposters the same, which is basically success and yeah. failure. So like, it's like the same. Stay With the same respect almost. Yeah, yeah don't, like, don't, don't get too high, don't get too cocky. and yeah, don't, don't get, focus like, too much on your, your wins and don't focus too much on your losses. Just kind of, yeah. that, and I guess that is difficult because football's an emotional game. You score like yeah. oh. a winner, but talking about highs and lows, that, um, and the, <laughs> the shirt I've got, I think yeah. it is the shirt from so that the playoffs. Specific, yeah, that um, specific shirt. Um, South End wasn't it? Twenty, what year was that? Twenty fifteen, because mm. uh, it was the year after. So they just stayed up at Torquay. Yeah. And then that was the year that Alfie Mawson joined us, I believe. Yeah. And Jacobson. See, like there was a bit of a turnaround there, there that was summer. Maybe like, twelve players who left. And then twelve players coming. Got his. Got his. So I got a, quite a good couple of stories from that season. Yeah. Um, stayed up on the last day. Mm-hmm. Down, down, gone, fine. Cool. And what was that like? Emotionally, t- the re- relief, I, I guess. I was on the bench. Else. I didn't come on for that game. The boys, in that situation, won 3-0. Talkie mm-hmm. were already down. Okay, that's fine. And then mm-hmm. we had a radio by the Stuart Oh, uh, so you were hearing the... And it was just nuts. Like, oh, yeah, because I remember watching... I was watching it on Soccer Saturday. Oh and my, God. Part, my partner came in. She thought I was going to punch the TV. Was, <laughs> I was, I was like, like, Stelling. I remember Jess Stelling was kind of commenting on it. And Bristol just kept hitting the post. They hit the bar. How the they post, didn't score the that day, yeah carnage so and then we heard it was done with like one mm. minute to go so obviously we went mad lots of drinking yeah. on the way out <laughs> yeah i can imagine <laughs> um, and like i said going from devastation to absolute elation mm. um but to credit to the manager like 11 like i can't remember how many players but nine 11 players something like that went mm. um i signed a two and a half year deal yep. mid-season so i was staying mm. and then you're looking at jacobson paul hayes um, Zito, a lot of it? senior boys and that was the start of His. Ainsworth's USP well yeah because you look Jacobson's still there now creating the I know later he had Akin Fenra they called him the Generals Bloomfield Gape as well wasn't that, it? some of the Generals that was the, but that was the start was that, it? Was, that the was the birth of it yeah um, so Paul Hayes comes in obviously I know him because I've watched him play he scored against Chelsea a few times mm. and we get a bonus for wins and yeah. draws points basically okay yeah so oh God, it wasn't a lot back then but it was like 50 pound a point mm. if you're in the pl- below the playoffs and out guaranteed wherever you are 50 pound yeah, a point yeah. or you can take like 83 pound a point but you have to be in the top seven oh, okay so i mean we just stayed up on the last day last season a lot of us are going yeah we'll take the 50 like mm. guaranteed hazy was like no no, no, we're gonna we're gonna be up there this season. Mm. Like we're taking the eighty three now. Listen, I'm sure it's a lot more now at Wickham or wherever. But like for me, I was like, if I start a game because mm. you got a bonus yeah, for that, cool. yeah. And I played. I started four games that week, and we've that month, and we've won three. Mm. Like that's making a big difference to like yeah. eventually what was my deposit for my flat in the future. Like yeah. that was a, <laughs> yeah, lot a lot for me. It's a lot as yeah. a nineteen twenty year old. But Hazy was like, no, we're not doing that. We're doing mm. the big one. Just set that mentality from the mentality from was day set. one. Yeah. And like I said, stayed up on the last day to losing in the playoff final, which obviously was incredibly painful on that day. Mm. Um, well, actually, go back. Alfie Mawson joined yeah. on the week of the season was, started. It was very le- So had he trained with the boys before his first game? Well, he said he had when I had him on my podcast. And I can't remember he had, but like... <laughs> In my head, I pictured him like just turning up just on the bus up on, on Saturday, the day, yeah. <laughs> or maybe turned up for Friday. And I was like, "Hello, oh, mate." I played against him. He was at Brentford yeah, um, yeah. a lot. Um, never stood out. 
Mm. I mean, I'm not, I never played against him thinking, wow, he's unbelievable. Yeah. And that's how amazing football can be. Like, There's a lot of players who flourish at different times. Like later development, yeah. Um, I mean, he was an absolute joke. Like, Newport, we played first game of the season. I started in midfield. Yeah. We've gone out, we've walked out, and it's blaring like Rodney Parade, I think it's called. It's really loud. Yeah, and yeah. I've gone, Alf, um, if I've got my back... So I'm facing my own goal and I set it back to you, left or right foot. Like, what foot do you want me to yeah. play? He's like, nah, either. And I was like, okay. Yeah. That's a bit confident. And part of you, because you haven't seen him play it, you're thinking, how that's do I flag. trust? Yeah. yeah, that's a red flag. Because I think really detailed, like, and this frustrates me with people I coach as well. Like, so I've got a man on. I'm going to set it to someone who's going to clear it. Yeah. So I'm going to set to you hands to clear it. Mm. I'm not going to fizz it at you because you need a soft pass for you to hit it first time. Yeah. If I fizz it at you, you're, you've got to to, touch, you're either going to shank it or you've got to take a touch. Could, pressure, be, could be a heavy touch, could, then the player comes in. Yeah. So that's where my mind goes really ultra detail. So I'm thinking, right, when that happens, yeah. I'm going to give it to his right foot so he can clear easily. Now he's gone that either foot. <laughs> and that. that whole season, he was clipping balls like John Terry, that left foot, right foot. Scoring yeah, goals that season, head. what a player! Incredible. I mean, goal at Luton is the one that obviously when he's taken it through and then so slotted good. it in the corner. Just so good. But um, um, yeah, it's such a shame though. With then the we lost. Yeah, yeah, so we lost in the playoff final at Wembley. Yeah, um, I remember that it was penalties because um, we had well JJ scored. Didn't, well, it was an own goal technically, but obviously yeah, JJ scored. Kit. Yeah, he did. Um, and then was it 121st minute? So yeah, we're running the ball up into the corner, and I'm thinking I'm going to be a League One player, like. I'm going to be a League One player. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So, when a year previous, you were thinking you might have been a conference player or having to... And I didn't know at, what the National League was like then. I thought, I'm not going there. Like It's probably an awful standard, which mm. it isn't. So I started to put that shirt on that you've yeah. got there. Yeah, yeah. Because when we're running around with the trophy, I want to have my shirt on. So I've taken my bib off, putting my shirt on. Yeah. And as I've got it around my hands, Piggott's oh, gone and Piggott's Spun has scored. scored yeah. And I've gone... And I'm a big, um, I never do that now. Like when my dad watching the TV, oh, he's like, like oh, we've won now. I'm like, shut up. You can't yeah, it's that say experience. That. That. Yeah. You can't say that. So, yeah, and then like that, we lose on penalties. Yeah. I, I wish I'd been on the pitch to take a penalty because mm. I always, but I've got a very good record yeah, now. Yeah, because I'd say, because currently you're penalty taker at Worldstone, is that correct? Yeah, I've been penalty taker for the last five, six years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do have a technique. It's, it's a lot of psychological as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll head. get get me back on after my career, and I'll tell you about it because I don't want to. You don't want to give it away. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. but it's very simple. It's very similar to Harry Kane. How I take penalties, yeah. like. Um, but yeah. But there is so much to it. I think because Ivan, and that's actually why. And there's certain people like so. My partner's dad. He he always says, "Oh, I don't like penalties. It's luck of the draw." I'm like, nah. There's actually so much. And I didn't yeah. appreciate this much until. Actually, he's been football playing a bit, and yeah. I'm I'm awful at penalties. Never put me on a penalty, even if it was just a charity game thing we did at yeah. Didcot. I I don't bat, like I don't have the power in it. I just don't like it. Um, but I don't see it as a luck of the draw. Like there's skill involved. Um, there is, and, yeah. And to be able to, especially taking two in a game, which obviously well, probably was Harry's thing against France when we when we went out. I've done that once. Yeah, and I won't ask you would you go one. the same way because you don't want to give it. <laughs> give no, it no, time, I. But changed I changed yeah. and missed and then when we won we got promoted in the conference south we're woke in yeah. I let someone else have it Yeah. because I was standing over the penalty the second one and I always know where I'm going or what I'm doing I, I went I don't know what I don't know what to do mm. uh, I think at Hampton I'd missed the second penalty so I had that in my mind just chucked it to my mate Heidi he scored and nice. yeah, yeah. Um, I think everyone was like if Heidi had missed that we would have all gone mad at you but I was kind of thinking Again, coach's mindset. I was like, "Yeah, I'm don't know well, what you I'm know doing." To doubt yourself, and the goalie yeah. thinks, "Well, I got a new penalty taker here now. Like, don't know what." So it might throw the keeper a little bit. And yeah. it did. So we, we won four three in that game. To be fair, um, but yeah, I do have a technique. It's very scientific. It's kind of just like the See, harder I kick it, yeah. the, sh- the quicker my run up takes time away from you as a goalie. Mm. So like. That's what you mean, yeah. Speed, like, speed equals distance every time. Was that at school? Something like that. So, like, <laughs> if I hit the ball harder and my run-up is I was gonna say, very, shorter and quicker... There's a science to it. We'll, we'll you have less, and a lot yeah. of my penalties, the goalie gets a hand on it, but because I've taken that time away, like, mm, no. it goes in. Um, but, yeah, I wish I'd been on the pitch to take one at Wembley. I have never played at Wembley, which is, oh, yeah. again, something at Wilson. 
we have You're still in the trophy, right? We are, we are. You We've are still in the trophy. Game Tuesday, next round, and then... Has it been reversed now, or is it still at Worldstone? It will be reversed. Uh, so... Because I know it's if it's been postponed twice at a certain... We... Um, it'll be on Tuesday. I don't think we'll be able to play at ours, so it'll get reversed. Yeah. Um, just so much rain, it's just been yeah. ridiculous this so, winter. Yeah, so by the time this comes out, that game will happen. So hopefully, yeah, still, still on with the yeah. chance of it. Yeah. Remember, Hen- is it Hendon? Hendon at, at home, and then the winners will play Solihull at home. So yeah. a very good Solihull team. Solihull Moors, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you fan- obviously a home draw um, in any cup competition yeah, is kind of what you want. Amazing, um, that'd be that'd be awesome. I mean, we through work um, last year it was the Vars, so it was. Ascot United against Newport Pagnon. Yeah, it was two of our clubs, two okay. Bucks of Bucks clubs. So, so we all, yeah. we got we were in like the royal box. So yeah, yeah. we're like where the the trophy lift was. We were up there and um, yeah, wicked. It was awesome and like for those players yeah. um, to get a chance to play at Wembley. Yeah. Like, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter what competition it is to to, to play at Wembley. It's matter. incredible. That's why I've just got I have to do it one more time before I, f- I finish because it's that burning sign sign me that you can either go up in the playoffs. Yeah. Don't think I'm going to get to the FA Cup final or semi final. <laughs> so. Um, so the or, or the, the trophy, bar, trophy yeah. or the bars probably, yeah. so. when I moved to Chertsey Chertsey had just won at Wembley so it was all round I, we just bought our flat and it was yeah. all like trophy winners around oh, the amazing. town so, and that so yeah fingers crossed for me yeah. hopefully 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 and if there's a penalty at Wembley don't tonight, say I know, that I know yeah. who's going to yeah, yeah. oh I'll step up <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you step up yeah, yeah. whether it goes in or not we'll see but yeah no but, but as you say don't want to don't want to say anything and too much Paul Hayes said to me when do you ever get a 12 yard shot with no one in the way in a football match? Mm. And I was like, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. It's a chance at a free goal. Yeah. Talk about Paul Hayes, that volley at um, Spurs away, White Hart Lane. I was there, I was in the away. Yeah, and that's then. when I, I just left after that season. So yeah, you had, yeah. That yeah. looked, um, and I got back in the chamber and said 4 3. And I was like, what? Yeah. And then I looked we at all the minutes the of the goals yeah. and I was how like, we didn't oh even get a replay. God. How we didn't even get a replay from that. But then they had to bring Deli Ali on. Son as well. Son, like, mad. Yeah. yeah, incredible, incredible. Best and worst experience of a football match for me it was like the best away day but at the same time so to go from 3-2 up with like five minutes to go and not get a replay was, was hard was hard but um, no I've really enjoyed it thanks yeah, man. it's been a really good insight in. I yeah. feel not sure how long we've been talking to talking for but um, I've enjoyed it I could carry on chatting I'm impressed how just off script it is it's just like just casual just yeah no, I'm, I'm I, that's what I, I like to just have it conversation when we didn't know didn't know what we were going to talk about yeah. um, there's some bits up here, the stats and everything. I'm, I'm a real stato. Yeah. Um, but there is a question I, I ask everyone. So I do want to finish with that for yourself as well. It's not quite related to football, but it's just what does happiness mean to you? What does happiness mean to me? Um, just being, well, I definitely have it on a football pitch, but just having, mm. being in a moment where you have no worries or you're not thinking about stuff mm. that gets you down so it could be bills it could be like people you don't get on with it's like you're and that's why often people get it on the football pitch because yeah. you're just focusing on winning um happiness i just find i love just being in a place with people i love mm. having no cares or worries yeah, for that yeah. specific amount of time whether that's on holiday whether that's obviously we've both got weddings coming up i can't wait for it because yeah i have all my favorite people under one roof for one night yeah. so like yeah, I'm sure I'll be nervous before it, yeah. but like I know it's going to be like the happiest day of my life. That's so amazing. Such a nice way of putting it. And I think, yeah. It's the people we have around you and the things you're doing. Yeah. That's, that's happiness that's, to me. I think that's happiness. Amazing. No, appreciate Great. it, mate. All the best for the rest of the season. Thank you. And uh, for the wedding as well, of course, yeah. in the Cheers. summer. We're both going, both going to be in that boat. But yeah, I love what you just said there about it's about the people all being under one roof and people that mean a, yeah. mean, mean a lot to you. And that's what it's about. I mean, I've said that with, like, with my partner. We've been together 13 years now. So, uh, We've gone from 17 to 30 kind of together. Yeah. So it's a long time, but we're, it's not really going to change our lives massively. No. Because we're like living together now. I'm only like, three years ahead of you. I met Rachel when she was 19. So yeah, yeah. I was so, 21. So yeah. So being through, being through it all. Um, yeah. And it's amazing, but it's for, it's almost the day and the celebration is for everyone else and getting everyone together. But um, yeah. no. Brilliant. Appreciate it, mate. Top man. Enjoyed Top that. Man. Cheers, man. Cheers, mate. Thank you so much for tuning in to this latest episode of Flat Whites and Insights and I really hope you gained something from that conversation. I know I certainly did. It would mean a lot if you can like and subscribe on whatever platform you may be watching or listening on. But also, if you head over to Instagram and give me a follow at Cappuccino. This is the best place to contact me but also see the latest developments on the platform 
as we look to increase awareness of mental health through my passions for coffee and football. In addition, if you've heard something that you can relate to or you want to talk about a little bit more, feel free to message me on that platform. But also, if you fancy coming on yourself and having a conversation, then do let me know, because I'm always keen to connect with new people and get insights into other areas and other passions and other challenges that I might have no experience of myself. Thanks again, and I really hope you tune in for the next episode. Take care of yourselves. I've been Hans. Thank you.